This is a visit of the Orma Smith Museum of Natural History in Caldwell, Idaho, with Bill Clark doing some commentaries. Are you walking in the front entrance of the museum? <coughs> The uh, museum is in the basement of Boone Hall at the College of Idaho. Uh, this is the beginnings of our uh, public <coughs> exhibit area. We have a variety of normal things you would find in natural history museums. Mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fishes, insects, other invertebrates, plants, geology, fossils, and so on. A little gift shop. Butterfly exhibit in honor of one of our Lepidoptera curators from the past. Insect display. A little bookshop. Store, yep, storage for the storage for the gift shop. Excuse me. <laughs> Summer student Will Callahan. Yeah. Making great escape. See you, Will. Thanks. Yeah. Bye, Bill. Bye. <laughs> yep. Um, so this is walking into the entomology area. Most 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 groups covered. Um, this is the uh, the dry the pinned collection area. We have an extensive alcohol collection area also. Swing around. As you swing around to the left, you'll see our curator of Coleotra, Al Galogli, working away there. Good to, good to see him at work. Unfortunately not with me. <laughs> <laughs> we walk... Uh, out of out of the the pinned insect area, and we get into uh, alcohol storage of material. Uh, some some organized, some miscellaneous. Here's the director's office. Yeah, a desk. <laughs> uh, bird collection. Bird collection is small. A lot of mounted material, but some uh, study skins and. Eggs and nests, as you would find in normal, normal collections. Uh, here's a here's a close-up look at how the the alcohol alcohol material is stored. Uh, these are gastropods. These happen to be primarily the uh, invasive New Zealand mud snail, uh, which are common throughout a lot of southern Idaho and common throughout the West now. And it's all being databased. These are these are databased. Yep. That's very impressive. Not unfortunately the whole museum is not databased. <clears throat> this entire museum is run by volunteers, which is greatly impressive. The museum is open to the public on Friday afternoon from one to five located at the College of Idaho in Caldwell. Then we get into other, other aquatic invertebrates, insects and other invertebrates from aquatic surveys. And then you're looking at a marine collection there that's to your right. Those three cabinets are a, a pretty good collection of most marine invertebrate groups. Down to more aquatic insects and other invertebrates from primarily from stream surveys. <laughs> barn owl. Barn owls are commonly found as roadkill, so the specimens are pretty pretty easy to come by. Uh, mammal. We're walking into the mammal collection now. Uh, the mammal collection is uh, as general things but also is uh, has a good collection of ground squirrels, also a good collection of South American material. There's a fair amount of Bolivian material.
we have uh, one of our uh, alums and research associates works for Alaska Fish and Game, so occasionally we get bears, walruses, other things through him that they have to dispose of. Dr. Jensen is curator in here in the mammal collection. Walking down through the, the back side of the, we had to have a coyote in here since the college's mascot is a coyote, so. Walking, getting in here, sort of to the end of the public exhibit area. Here are some uh, some students checking it out right now. Continue. You just okay. leave me. All right. So we'll move on down. Just just to the left here is the herpetology collection. It's a small a small area, but it basically has the reptiles and amphibians. Um, we can oh, we can open a cabinet door, give a little look at how at how those materials are. <laughs> are stored in 70% ethanol. Small collection, but an important collection. Yes. start in here into the uh, fossil collection. Um, the, co the fossil collection is real heavy in Miocene plant fossils and is the third largest collection uh, west of uh, Michigan. Uh, Michigan and Cal California Berkeley have larger collections and I think we're number three in that regard. Uh, there are also uh, plant fossils from other um, Time frames and locations in here. Um, a new a new site which has been, just recently been discovered by our curators up at Payette Lake. Um, so that's uh, that's still in the exploration and research mode. Uh, there are uh, some uh, animal fossils on the left, vertebrates, including uh, material from the Hagerman horse site. There was, there was a variety of, of, of animals found at that at that site, but it was uh, excavated heavily by the Smithsonian back in the 1930s. Uh, they didn't have funds to pay uh, salaries, but one of the, the college professors worked a summer there, and they paid him off with uh, with horse bones and a horse skull, and that became part of this collection. We've got such things as as uh, hmm. uh, mussels, uh, their freshwater bivalves are seem to be threatened uh, by development and by water quality and habitat issues, just like lots of things. And so we, these are these are not from Idaho, but we felt it important to to uh, add them to the collection rather than see them lost. Uh, get down here. And, and I can turn light on if you want. Lab. Um, you, might, you might find this impressive. Uh, this is the paper catalog for the fish collection. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's all it's all electronic also. But there's the paper catalog, uh, 8313 lots, 8313 lots, cataloged in. Ooh. And we recently did with University of Idaho, we recently showed uh, their 38 minus project uh, that uh, Lonnie Hutton had put together. We recently exhibited that here joint project between the museum and the art department. Move on back through the museum. There are some storage areas, but basically these tall uh, tan cabinets for a ways here are the fish collection. 
Um, an example of how these are, that this is uncurated material from Montana here that was donated to us. Uh, the, the curated material here, these are the cottage sculpins. Um, this is how they end up. There's, and there's a, the accession or the catalog number uh, goes into our, you know, keys it to our, our museum database. So there's more fish um, going all the way back. Uh, when we run out of uh, when we run out of fish area, uh, we get into aquatic invertebrate storage. Uh, so these are these are aquatic invertebrates collected by Idaho Department of Environmental Quality and stream surveys. Uh, the collections have been made. The collections have all been sorted and identified, uh, mostly by eco analysts. And these are uh, just awaiting, awaiting curation into the collection. <clears throat> Here's fo fossil insects are in, uh, Ooh. Uh, in these drawers. Eocene material out of Colorado. Green River Formation is famous for, for some of its fossils. Howard and Darlene Emery, a couple of our curators, have amassed much of that fossil material. And get back kind of into storage. Uh, lots of taxidermy mounts. There's a muskox. Uh, <laughs> From, from Alaska, uh, the other the muskox, the other part of the museums from Greenland, and you just thought you end up with storage, um, probably the kind of things that you discarded. <laughs> we need to do some of that. I know. <laughs> We're about fifteen thousand square feet. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, I'll, I'll flip this light off. You know, back back into the old library area is kind of just storage right now and sorting. Uh, we can we can take a peek into the new library. Yes. And uh, archaeology, if you want. Oh yeah. So we have a complete film. <laughs> this is the old so this library. Is, this is um, yeah. This is a uh, botanical part of the part of Mexico. The Mexico part of the herbarium here. But there, was, there, there wasn't room for up in the, the main herbarium upstairs, so there's herbarium cabinets. And then we have literature that's, that's not yet been sorted, uh, determined what, what can go into the museum library or, or what we can discard. And slowly, slowly cleans out some areas. Um, we, may, we, may be moving a, uh, we may be moving a rock and gem collection into this area. Gem and mineral collection. Mm-hmm. And back to the public yep. exhibit space. Everyone is encouraged to come and <laughs> visit and enjoy it. Everybody here are volunteers, all retired eminent scientists who just cannot <laughs> leave their job. Yep. Yep. Richard, Richard Salisbury, our, our, one of our uh, mollusk curators, is an expert in, in Pacific Island gastropods. He'd be a good friend with Rob Cowry. Probably. In the uh, University of Hawaii. I'm Could sure they know. Christensen of Hawaii. You know, uh, is it Carl Christensen? Mm -hmm. He did land snails. Some of the, the uh, archaeological material is lo is both local and then some Egyptian because our right now our main uh, archaeological curator is an expert on Egyptian archaeology. Cool. Actually con conducts field work in Egypt and has some material here from from her work. Jan Summers Duffy is our our uh, in-house archaeologist.
We have some of the Luther Douglas sand paintings, including the large 4x8, which we believe he only did two that size. We have, we have one of those, and we have uh, 25, 30 smaller ones. The, uh, the bison, uh, extinct bison, came from American Falls Reservoir area, bison latifrons. And one of our students went over and spent her spring vacation making that fiberglass cast uh, from the original. That's pretty impressive to think of that thing running through the, the plains. <laughs> Craig Baird at work. That's, that's always good to see. <laughs> Craig is one of our entomology curators and expert in solitary bees, spiders, and many other groups. Formerly employed by U of I. That's right. <laughs> so we take a little stroll down the down the hallway in Boone Basement. Uh, the biggest room is the research library, and we'll go into that here now. Beautiful. Wayne, Wayne Lewis is our current librarian, has been working uh, to put this together, I think in about the last three years. Uh, this is our former woodworking shop. And we cleaned it out and remodeled it a bit and uh, made it into our library. <clears throat> oh, lots of material. <clears throat> we had 20 of these big cabinets that a fish collection, that actually the U of I fish collection came in. Volunteers cut the backs off, modified them, put middle bars in them to double the storage space for literature. And it's, it's, uh, I think it's pretty decent. Yeah. Um, journals are in here al in alphabetical order. Um, other, other, other specialties um, are variously organized, but, but basically if you're looking for a specific book on a subject, you can go to that area and you can pretty quickly find it. Canadian Journal of Botany, Canadian Entomologist, The Condor, Conservation Biology, and lots of books and monographs. Some of the old standbys, ecology, ecological monographs, those things. And the museum gladly accepts donations if uh, you have series of monographs or books that you want to let go this is great place for uh, to host them and there's Wayne Lewis our librarian He's done a huge job down here. <laughs> Usually spends at least one day a week, plus the museum work days in here working. Archaeology room. Tight for space, as are all of the rooms and collections, but a variety of materials. Uh, Heavy on, on Western influence and Idaho, but also Southwest materials and, and materials from international locations as well. Jan Summers Duffy is the curator here, and this is her office and, and lab and storage area. And once a month on a Saturday, all the curators get together to do a day of work in addition to time that other curators spend. Well, it, make, it makes can. a good time for volunteers to be able to come down, see what's going on, get hands-on experience, 
help the curators. So any of you, you can contact the museum if you want to volunteer and assist the curators in their duties. That's one Saturday per month. Usually the first Saturday, unless it conflicts with the national holiday.